Hello everyone. So we are going to make a little oil barrel today. Uh, complexity of one, simple wee model. It's not going to take too long. Uh, let's just skip over to 3D Studio Max here and we will get started. So this slightly more complicated than the last little mesh that we made. Uh, we're going to start with the cylinder and I'll just bring this out here. Now Again, making a game asset, if we're going to put it in a game engine, we want to check the scale of this and we want to make sure that it is uh, correct, real world scale, correct to proper sizes. So first thing we should do uh, with any project, we want to do a reference first of all, what do your research? So even just a, a simple Google image search here gives up loads of nice reference images for oil barrels and it'll, uh, it'll show us lots of little details and stuff, how many wee rims we should have around the side, this lip detail here. Uh, our little uh, lids and valves and holes and things. Uh, but the other thing I did, I went to Wikipedia and just got the actual size dimensions of one of these drums. So we can see here, outside dimensions, uh, 584 diameter, and uh, where are we? 876 height. So that'll do grand, 876 height. And we'll just type that in here. So 87.6 centimeters high and we'll zoom out there and what were we 584 uh, 584 on the rim so I'm going to do just some quick way extrusions and stuff I'll not be exactly that oh 584 centimeters nope that's not what I want 58.4 there we are. Oh, hang on, sorry. Again, that is radius, diameter. The radius should be half of that, so 28.2. There we go, perfect height now. So that is our basic cylinder that we are going to make our oil barrel from. And the dimensions are roughly correct. We're going to add a couple of wee extrusions and stuff here. So first of all, I want to hit F4 just so I can see my uh, polyframe there and what I want to do is I'm going to add another cap segment here just so we get this uh, in the center uh, 18 sides depending on your poly count what you want to go for we could bring this down maybe a wee bit lower to about uh, 12 would be as low as we would really want to go if we're going really low poly um, 24 if you want to be really smooth uh, I don't think you would really want to go higher than that unless you were doing VFX for a film or something if we're doing uh, video games real time games 24 uh, segments, probably enough. Height segments, I'm going to lower this to 3. And that will give us these two lines around the middle. If we look back at our reference imagery, we'll see that most oil barrels have kind of two ridges going around the middle. And we'll use these lines as guides for these. Whoops, where are we going? There we are. So lots of different styles of oil barrels. There's ones with extra smaller ridges in them. Some of them can have these lines shifted up or down a wee bit. But we'll just leave that as is and that will do lovely. So height segments is correct. Cap segments is correct. Sides, that'll do grand. I am happy with that. So what we'll do is we will right click and convert this to an edible poly. And we'll do a wee bit of housekeeping here as well before we even start any modeling. Uh, my grid is far too small. I don't really need the grid, but just to remind you how to get that up, we'll go to uh, edit. Is it edit or is it tools? Tools. Grids and snaps. Grid and snap settings. Click over to home grid. I want my grid, I'll say just every 10 centimeters just time. And I'll do 20 lines. There we go. That just means I can see my grid underneath there. Uh, what I will also do is I want to center this in the origin point. So easiest way to do that with my move tool selected. We'll get a wee movement gizmo here. I can right click just in these little arrows down here. And that will pop them right on the zero point. Uh, what else do I want to do? I want to name my object. I'm going to call this uh, oil barrel. Oil underscore barrel. And I like to use underscores there instead of spaces because some game engines, some um, some applications don't like spaces and file names and things like that. So 
probably won't be an issue, but a good habit to get into is just use your underscores there instead. So let me see, what do we want to do? I'm just going to add some quick detail to this. Uh, I want to add a little lip around the top here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my ribbon here. And if you don't already see it, we can just click this little arrow and there we go. And I want to take this little option called Swift Loop. I find Swift Loop to be very, very handy for doing lots of stuff. Swift Loop is a, a toggle mode, so you click it once to turn it on, click it again to turn it off. It's very important to turn it off when you're done with it. So we click it on, and now what happens is when we hover over our model, you will see a little ring appearing here. And when I click, it will split the geometry where that ring is. So I just want a little rim up at the top of the barrel here. So we click once. There we go, and it is added in that geometry. I'm going to add another one down the bottom here. It's quite close to the bottom. There we are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude this out very shortly. But I also know that I want to sink down this uh, top surface of the barrel just a little bit. So I want to actually add another swift loop in here. Just a little bit inside. And there we go. And we would actually do the same to the bottom as well. Just a little one there. Uh, about there will do. Okay, so now we'll turn off Swift Loop. What I'm going to do now, I want to select all of these bottom vertices. I want to do all the top vertices as well. Sorry, polygons. So uh, rather than selecting them manually, if we're going to polygon mode here, take your time. Okay, so rather than select all these manually, which will take forever, what I will do is I will select just this very center vertex. When it vertex mode, select the center vertex. Now, if I hold control, and then hit polygon button, it will select all of the polygons connected to that vertex. That's a quick little shortcut for you, very, very handy. And what I will also do now is hit this grow button and click it once and it will expand out that polygon selection. There we go. So lovely little combo there for selecting polygons. Next, I want to just hit the extrude. So instead of hitting the button itself, I always like to click the little settings button beside it. And when we click that, it will drop it down a little bit, drop it down one centimeter. We actually want it to go the opposite way. We want it to go minus about one centimeter. There we go, lovely. And we just hit that little tick. And that is that done. We go up to the top, we're going to repeat that same process. So I'm going to go to vertex mode. I'm going to click this center vertex. I'm going to hold control. Click on the polygon sub-object mode to get that inner ring. I'm going to click it once again. Hit grow. And now I am going to go to my extrude again. Click the little settings button beside it to bring up my little tiny menu here. And what's good about this is it will actually save the same settings as before. So if we want to just hit OK. There we go. Now, uh, one thing that I should do here, if I press F4 and get rid of my uh, polyframe, you will see that we are getting this kind of harsh shading here. What's happened there is that our smoothing groups have not uh, carried over to the extrusion. So you can see the outside rim here uh, has a smoothing group applied and everything's nice and smooth and gradiented. But on the inside, this new geometry that we just created there from the extrusion does not have the same smoothing groups. So we can fix that very, very easily. Uh, in polygon mode again, I will select one of these. And the quickest way to select this whole ring here, another little tip for you, if I just hold shift, and you will see that as I hover over the adjacent polygon, it kind of highlights it in yellow. And I click that, that selects that entire ring for us. So what we'll do is we will come down here in our modifier panel and apply a smoothing group to this, any one at all. Now, I won't use one, two, three, four, five, because that might be the same one that this top surface has. So instead, we'll just pick a random one here in the middle somewhere. And there we go, nice and smooth. And I'll do the same thing for the bottom. It's got that same facet happening. Click one, hold the shift key beside it. And there we go. And we'll just throw another random smoothing grip on there. Perfect. So let me see, what do we want to do now? Uh, okay, I'll press F4 to bring my frames back on. 
Uh, I want to add. I want to. I'll add this little top rim. We'll finish off the top rim and then we'll go do the rest. So let me see. Hold the polygon key. I'll just select this. Get hold shift. Select that whole ring. And I will extrude you. So here we have a little problem going with the extrusion. Um, it's kind of going to the side rather than out the way. That's not what we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to just change how it actually extrudes here. We've got a couple of different methods of extrusion. At the minute it's doing a method called grouping. And that's not what we want right now. It worked for the other ones, but not for this. So we'll click on that. And we actually want to change this to local normal. And what local normal does is it will extrude it out the way from the face of each polygon. So if I just uh, expand that out a bit, you can see how it's working differently now. But we only want this just a tiny, tiny, tiny wee amount. Just a tiny little extrusion, about half a centimeter. That'll do, hit OK. Perfect. And we will do the same on the bottom. We will select the polygon, we'll hold Shift, and it'll highlight that whole ring. We click on that ring, we hit Extrude, or rather the little button beside it. And it saves the same settings, that's perfect, and we'll hit OK. Just hit the little tick, and that's good to go. So just to tell you what actually is a normal, um, every polygon here is just a, a flat surface. And if you look at the, 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 the arrow here for the X, it's not quite aligned correctly, but this gives you a good idea of what normal is. The normal of a polygon is literally just the direction that it's facing. So if you imagine uh, the surface of a table and you stand a pencil straight up on that table, that pencil is pointing in the direction of the normal. The normal is basically just the direction that a polygon is facing. So when we extrude by local normal, it will extrude every face equally in the direction that it's facing. Uh, okay, so what else do we want to do here? We could now just tidy up um, some of this geometry. We've got this extra ring here that we could get rid of. We don't really need. Again, if we're working for really low poly, we'll try and save as many polys as we can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my edge mode. And I'm going to just select one of these edges. And now if I zoom in, if I hold shift, I can select that whole thing there. Now, we want to be careful with how we get rid of these. There's a couple of different button combinations here that do different things, so we want to make sure we choose the right one. If I just hit the delete key, bad news, it's going to delete all our verts. We don't want that, delete all our polys. If I hit the backspace key, it looks like it's doing what we want it to do, but if I just zoom in here, you will see that it's still leaving us with two separate lines here. And what this means is that instead of having nice four-sided polygons here, there are actually still vertices in the middle. So we're getting uh, six-sided polygons. We don't want that. It's unclean. So let me see. Can I get back? There we go. Um, so we don't want that. What we actually want to press, uh, we want to hold shift to make sure we select the whole ring. We want to press control and then backspace. So control and backspace. And when we do that, it gets rid of that ring. And if I select that edge, you will see that is now one entire edge. So as well as we hit control backspace, as well as getting rid of the line itself, it gets rid of all the connected vertices and just leaves that as a four-sided poly. So there we go. Uh, we'll just repeat that process on the bottom. We're going to select this wee line here in the middle, the one we don't want because it's uh, duplicates. Hold shift up here. Alternatively, if you don't want to hold shift, we can hit the loop button. And loop will also select that. Uh, and then just hold control and backspace. And that gets rid of that. If you wanted to, we could do the same thing down here for this ring. It's just some extra polys for us. If I can ever get it selected. There we go. Uh, control backspace. And we could do the same for the top as well. We don't really need that ring there. So I can hit loop again if that's easier. Control backspace. Just to get rid of those lines. And collapse all those polys nicely. So let me see. We've got those. We could... We could chamfer these. 
Also, let me just check if for yeah, our smoothing's all fine. Uh, we could chamfer these to give a little bit more detail. Uh, I showed you in the last video when we made a, a tombstone how we took it into ZBrush to make our high poly version. Uh, in this series, I'm not going to go into ZBrush, so we're not going to have a high poly mesh to work off of. But if you did want to make a high poly mesh and have a little bit more detail in it, one thing we could do, we could loop around these edges and we could uh, go to the chamfer option here and we could chamfer these and soften them. Uh, give it maybe two or three segments and increase the size of that chamfer and there you can see that we're sort of softening off that edge and rounding it off. That is what uh, the real oil barrel should look like. Um, do you know what? I'll maybe just add a little chamfer here. I'll not do a massive one. I'll just add a little bit of a chamfer here to soften that a little bit. But we could, if we wanted to make a high poly model, we could just make a high poly one here in 3D Studio Max as well. Uh, we could add in all these details just in Max, just be chamfering and softening things and things like that. So I'll maybe just I'll add a little chamfer here, just a little one chamfer. Whoops. Make sure I select the whole ring there uh, with my loop key. I'll just soften these a little bit. Maybe not even quite as much as that. Uh, I will I'll leave that bottom edge there because purely for the fact that in game we're not really going to see this bottom side of it quite as much so more likely if the sun shining this or a light shining on it it's going to be hitting from the top down so we'll get some nicer reflections and things just be jumping this top edge but we can leave the bottom edge as is just to save a few more polys but what we will do is we'll do it in the bottom as well because oil barrel is one of those kind of game objects that could be um, it could be rolling on the ground, it could be on its side or whatever. So I'll just quickly chamfer these two. Um, either hold shift on and click or just hit the loop key and we'll chamfer. And I'm not even looking at the value there, I'm just adding a quick chamfer. There we go. Okay, so nearly modeled the oil barrel now. What time are we on? How much have we gone? 17 minutes. Okay, we'll try and get this done in the next five minutes, maybe. Um, I want to add these little ridges down here. So here's how we're going to do that. I'm going to click and I'm going to hold shift. Uh, hold shift and click here. And then I'm actually going to do both of these at once. So now that I've got this first one, uh, this ring selected, I'm going to hold control and select this one and then hold shift and select the one next to it. And now I've got both of these rings selected. An alternative way is just hold one, control click the other, so we get two separate lines selected, and then just hit the loop key and that will loop right round. Okay, so what do we want to do? Um, I am going to hit the chamfer key again. So chamfer key also works on flat surfaces, not just corners, and the chamfer it does a nice little thing here. Basically the chamfer will split one line into two, and that can be very, very handy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chamfer that and just expand out a little bit. And I'm going to increase the number of segments here so that there are three segments, like so. And you'll see why in a little minute. So we want to have these three segments. I want to turn that line into three segments. I would just hit OK. And now we've got a lot more geometry in here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my polygon mode. I'm going to select this one, hold shift, select that ring. And then I'm going to control click another one down here in the middle, hold shift, and select that. So now I've got both of these rings, these little middle rings. And what I'm going to do, I am just going to take my scale tool. And I'm just going to scale these out ever so slightly and make a little bulge. Now, be careful. Look at your gizmo here, how you're going. So if I want to scale in one direction, I only want one of these axes to turn yellow. Uh, at the minute, this will do everything, but that's not quite what I want either. So all I wanted to do is come out the two horizontal axes, which would be the, the X and the Y. So just select that bottom little triangle. Actually, let me just change the color of this one. I'll borrow, you'll see that a bit easier. 
There we go. So one axis is that way. Two axes is just selecting the little uh, bottom triangle there between the X and Y axis. So just the tiniest little nudge, just the tiniest little amount to bulge that out. Don't go too far, I'll do something like that. We just want literally the smallest amount, just like we're moving our mouse basically one pixel. It's very, very sensitive. Uh, I can't get it exact. Yeah. I could do this actually. Um, oh, I'll show you a cool little tip actually. Um, rather than try and manually do that by clicking because it's very sensitive, what I'll do is I'll right click on my scale tool and it gives me this little window here. And, oh, actually, it's not working. Can I do it here? Yeah, okay, that'll do. Um, it is actually going on all three axes, but screw it, it's okay. We're just going to click this up a wee bit, up to about 102%. There we go. And there you can see we've got this little bulge now. And that is mainly our oil drum in good shape. Okay, so I'm going to click off polygon mode. I'm going to click out of sub object mode and bring this back into main object mode. Now let me just check my smoothing groups. Everything looks fine there. Um, actually, ooh, what I could do with my smoothing groups, my F4 here, I might set it so that my tall sections here are a different smoothing group to these small ones. And the reason for that is then it will make these just stick out just a wee bit more. At the minute, they're kind of blending in. You can't really see them. But if I change my smoothing groups, you see I'll select all my polygons. And I'll just draw a strip through here. Oops. Ah, at the minute, it's not drawing a strip through. Because my little object selection mode needs to be in crossing mode. It actually was, but it wouldn't select it. But if you just click it on and off again, it will make it okay. So select that, uh, control click another ring, control click another ring, there we go. And I'm just going to move this onto a different smoothing, what the hell, oh, a little bit of a glitch there. Uh, currently it's in smoothing group one, but these guys are also in smoothing group one. So I'm going to just deactivate smoothing group one and activate <coughs> smoothing group two instead. There we go. And we top level that and I turn off my frames. You can see now we're getting much more definition on these little um, ridges around the middle. And all we had to do was change our smoothing group from here to here. Now I'm getting some weird shadowing over the top here. It could be that we need to fix our smoothing groups here as well. So if you get any weird shadowing, uh, we'll hold shift and again just throw a random smoothing group on here. It doesn't really matter which one it is. Deactivate number two. Yeah. Uh, so this one, these were also number two. We just put these on number two, create a bit of a glitch here because that 90 degree angle, but they were both on the smoothing group, it didn't really work right. So we just throw something a random one and that should look a lot better. Yes, it absolutely does. Uh, getting some weird shadowing. And I think we're getting some weird shadowing down here as well. So we'll do the same thing. Um, yes, that's smoothing group two. That's smoothing group two. Generally, if anything is more than about a 45 degree angle, uh, two adjacent polygons, they should not be in the same smoothing group. So we'll just take all these and we'll put you down somewhere here as well. Deactivate two, put one three on. There we go, much, much nicer. I think that should do this for our smoothing groups. And happy days. Okay, the very last thing we need to model in this is just put our little um, hole on the top. We're not going to do a hole. We're not going to cut a hole in. I'm just going to put a little cap on here. And we're not going to spend a lot of time doing this. Uh, the video is running on quite a bit. I'm just going to make a tiny, tiny little cylinder here. Just something like that. And it only needs to be one height segment. Uh, one cap segment will do as well. And that will do, we'll move this now up on top of our barrel. Where are we? Oh, wrong way. Just shift that one axis at a time. 
until I was roughly right. Okay, there we are. I'm just kind of eyeballing the size of it here. So the radius will put you up a wee bit, maybe about two and a half gives us a, a radius of two and a half centimeters gives us a diameter of five centimeters. Five sounds about right, and the height will put it up to about uh, just over one centimeter. There we go. That looks okay. So if we look at our oil barrels, um, we'll just we'll just rename you as well. Uh, drum underscore cap. In fact, we'll just call it oil drum cap. Oil underscore drum cap. Keep it consistent. Um, if we look at our oil drums, they tend to have two little tabs on top here. They always seem to have two, and there's actually a little um, hexagonal kind of shape here as well. So we'll, we'll just quickly model that and to make sure everything's okay. So we have another separate wee cap here. Um, all I'm going to do for that, I'm actually just going to hold shift and move it along and I'll create a duplicate. Uh, and we'll just hit copy, that's fine. Uh, oil drum cap, uh, we'll get rid of that 01, we'll just call it uh, oil drum cap B, the smaller one. And we'll do is we'll make this one smaller. Uh, smaller. I'm not really worrying too much about the position of them here. Doesn't really matter. I mean, we just move you out a wee bit more. Um, but you can see they're kind of opposite each other. We've got a big one and a small one. Um, that will do. The only other thing I want to do is add just uh, if we're being really, really detailed. You could actually probably do this in, in the normal data. Um, we'll go to Substance Painter now, I think, on it. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll not complicate the geometry anymore. We will leave it at that. Um, yeah, that's okay. That is our model done. The last wee thing we've got to do now, oh, before I do anything else, I'm going to save it. I haven't saved this whole project. Uh, 10 minute save rule, guys. So, where will we save this? This PC. Dad D. My artwork folder. Random crap. 3D, 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 incomplete. Oil barrel, there we go. I'll call this uh, oil underscore barrel. There we go. I always forget to save my work. Uh, usually my computer crashes. So, okay, we've got this. We've got three objects here. I could, I could attach these to the main oil drum. But I won't. I will instead show you that we can, in fact, just select multiple objects. And with multiple objects selected, we can go in our modifier panel, if it would show up, go to unwrap UVW. And separate objects can all share one UVW map. So open UV editor. And this will come up very, very small. That's no good. So there we go. Everyone, we've got no real proper unwrap yet. I'll learn my polygon mode. I don't know which object I have selected here. Oh, it's selecting all through. Good. Is it? No, it's not selecting these two objects. It's only selecting the main one, the barrel. But that's okay. Now, I could uh, spend ages tidying this quickly, but since I'm just going to bring it into Substance Painter, and we're up to half an hour already on this video. I'm just going to go to mapping. Uh, let me see, unfold mapping and hit OK. Yikes, that's not very good. Uh, let me see, can I rescale this? Rescale custom pack. That looks like absolute garbage. So we will not do that. Do I have everything selected here? Oh, okay, there, that's why it's not actually selecting the whole object. Uh, it did not select the back facing. Okay, okay, okay. So we'll select everything here instead, and that will select everything. Now we'll go to mapping, unfold mapping. Let me see. Still looks like absolute garbage, we can't use that. Let me try it. Okay, I'll just use flatten mapping instead. That is a terrible unwrap. Look at all this empty space in the middle here. 
that is no good whatsoever to anyone. You'll see the kind of general angle it's taken here. This uh, slice through this little plane. That's no good. I wonder can I... Oh, hang on. What if I use a projection here? Cylindrical projection map. Might be better. Mapping. Unfold mapping. Okay. Still garbage. Okay. Now, you know what? I don't want this to drag on. So I'm just going to flatten mapping and leave it at that. It's not great, but it will work. Um, I go to top level. I just select this little cap here. Where is my open UVW map? There we are. Select all these polys. And these are uh, these look like they have been flattened out actually, have they? Maybe a bit dead take up on here. Open the editor. Do, 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 do. Oh yeah, they have been flattened out already. That's good. They all flattened as one. I thought I might have to separate them separately, but they all seem to go as one. That's okay. Okay, we're going to leave it there. Not a great unwrap. I just don't want this video running on too long. We can get more into unwrapping in later videos, uh, but this will do. What we are going to do now, we are going to save this. And we are going to export to an FBX, so we can open a Substance Painter. So, let me see. We'll just... Uh, do your good practice, go over to your utilities, we will reset our X form, reset selected. We'll not see any change, but that's good, we don't want to see any change. But it just makes sure when we export it, that all the dimensions and the rotations and stuff will be as they should be, as we see them in Max, they will carry over correctly. Uh, and we will save this once more. And we'll just go File, Export, Export Selected. Oh, no, we won't. We'll actually make sure we have everything. There we go. File, export, export selected. And where did we go? Where were we at last there? Quick access. Nope. Oh, spooky headstone. I'll we'll just come back from here. Yeah, sorry. I'm trying to find where I actually saved this to. Uh, random experiments. Oil borrow. There we go. Uh, so we're going to call this just um, oil borrow low poly. Again, all with underscores. Oh, wait, no. Before I do this, before I do this, just one little thing that can also, I'll deactivate this reset one. One little thing that can also happen. Um, I'm just going to apply a material to this. I'm just going to hit M and bring up my material editor. And I'm just looking to make sure I'm in the compact mode of the material editor. If it's looking different, just uh, hit mode and change over to compact. I'm just going to apply a material to this. And just apply it to those three little objects I have there. And I'll turn the whole thing grey. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the name of this to my oil drum material. Silly name, but just so that when we went to Substance Painter, we can tell what texture set we're working from. So there we go. Now we can export this file. Select all three. File. Export selected. And, oh God, I have to find that place again. .d artwork. Run experiments. Oil borrow. And again, oil underscore barrel underscore low poly. And save. And we can just hit OK on that. And that is us done in 3D Studio Max. In part two, we will take this into Substance Painter and we will paint it up nicely. Uh, that dragged on a little bit longer than I thought, 35 minutes. For such a simple model, I would have thought that would have been a lot quicker, but I guess I just talk a lot. 
Uh, so yeah, we'll leave it there and I'll see you in part two where we will go into Substance Painter. Thank you very much for watching guys. If you have any questions, please ask down below. Uh, if you have any requests as well for other models that we can make, um, feel free to comment because I'm, I want to make a series of these simple models just for my students, just to get them used to the process. Uh, okay, we'll leave it there and I will chat to you next time. Goodbye.